In a lot of the work we've been doing on percentages up until now, we've been dealing with issues related to finances and money. And this is these contexts are contexts in which we will often come across percentages. So often when we're dealing with issues around money, percentages do crop up. So I want to just go through some of those financial words that we might come across um, and do a few more examples around percentages in those contexts. So the first are the words of profit and loss, which I'm sure you've heard of. Profit, simple idea, right? If I buy a packet of chips for four rand and I sell it to you for five rand, I've made money, right? I've made one rand and that's my profit. If, however, I bought the packet of chips for four rand and ended up selling it to you for three rand, well, actually, I've lost money on that deal. I've lost a rand. And so basically, that's what I call a loss. And that's easy enough to work out the profit or the loss. And obviously, businesses quite like to do that and um, to know what their profit has been or their loss has been. That's really important for them. Uh, and sometimes they want to talk about it in terms of a percentage. So let's look at an example. If it costs me 40 rand to make a cake and I sell the cake for 50 rand, I want to know what percentage profit I make. So I start off at 40 rand making the cake, end up selling it for 50. What percentage profit do I make? Well, I can immediately tell you the amount of profit, right? I'm sure you don't even have to say there's 50 minus 40. I'm sure you immediately knew that the amount of the profit was 10 Rand. What is the percentage profit? Well, it is 10 out of the starting amount of 40 turned into a percentage. And 10 over 40 is just 1 over 4, and 1 over 4 times 100, well, 4 goes into that once, and into there 25 times, so it'll be 25%. So the percentage profit was 25%. 25% of what it cost you is what you get as profit. Tax is the money that the government charges us so that they can have money to build our schools and run our hospitals and uh, make roads and all the things you need to keep the country going. There are many different kinds of tax and they are mostly worked out as percentages. And today we're just going to look at one which is VAT, value added tax. Now VAT is basically the tax we pay on anything, almost anything that we buy. And the VAT is worked out at 14% of the cost of the item. The shops actually in South Africa work out the VAT for us and put the price, including VAT, onto the item we're going to buy. So if you go and have a look at the price of something in, the, in a shop, basically what's happened is the shopkeeper has said, oh, look, Here's the amount I want to sell it for. I must then add 14% of that amount, get a total, and put that price on it. But the 14%, that goes off to the government. The shopkeeper has to send that on to the government as VAT. We'll do an example just now, working out VAT on something. Another kind of sort of tax or a, a sort of thing where we often have to pay a percentage of our salaries is for things like pensions. Sometimes we have to take money off for that or for, for medical savings, all sorts of things. A very common one is that we people put in uh, money to the unemployed unemployment insurance fund which is the UIF and that's normally worked out as one percent of your salary and what that does is it, it kind of goes into a fund and at some point later you can then draw money out of that fund if you no longer have a job. So if I earn 4,000 Rand each month and have to pay one percent of my salary for UIF how much will I pay? Very simple I'm going to pay 1% of my salary. Well, 1% of my salary is 1% of 4,000. That's 1 over 100 times 4,000. And I can divide top and bottom by 100, and I will get the answer of 40. So I pay 40 Rand each month to this unemployment insurance fund. 
Why don't you try an example with that? Open your um, homework book and try this. A plumber charges me 200 Rand to fix my toilet. He then adds the 14% VAT. What will that total bill be? What will he have to charge me? Pause the video and try this now. Okay, so the VAT will be 14% of the 200. Well, that's 14 over 100 times the 200 Rand. I can divide top and bottom by 100, so I'm left with just doing 14 times 2, which is 28. So the VAT that he will charge me is 28 Rand. But that's not what my question asked. The question asked, what will the total bill be? The plumber has to make the total bill the 200 Rand, which is the amount that he's actually going to get, and then the 28 Rand VAT, which he's got to send off to the government, and so I will have to pay him 228 Rand. The last idea we're going to look at is interest. Interest basically works as follows. If a bank lends you a whole lot of money, let's say 10,000 Rand, they're not going to do that just because they're feeling kind. Because basically, with that 10,000 Rand, they could have gone out and bought a whole lot of things, started a business where they could have made a whole lot of money. So they're not going to say, oh, well, let's be nice and give you 10,000 Rand to use for whatever you want, and you can just give it back to us when you're ready. They're only going to give you that 10,000 Rand to you if they can make money out of it. So what they'll say is, Yes, you can use that 10,000 Rand, but you're going to have to pay it back. And you're not only going to have to ha pay it back, you're going to pay it back with interest. In other words, you're going to pay it back plus a certain percentage extra. And the same works the other way around. If you put your money into the bank and you leave it there, they'll actually pay you something, some interest, for leaving it in the bank. Let's look at an example to see how it works. Now, just to be clear, in this section, we're going to just be looking at simple interest. The way things work in reality actually ends up being quite a bit more complicated. And as you go up the grades, you'll start to see some more of those complicated situations. But at the moment, we're just going to look at simple interest, which is where we assume that you just pay a certain percentage of your original amount each year in interest. So let's have a look. If you put 2,000 Rand in the bank and you get paid 4% simple interest each year for three years, how much will you have after three years? Well, 4% simple interest just means you get paid 4% of the original amount each year. So, the amount of interest each year will be 4% of the amount that you put into that bank. So 4% of 2,000. We know very well by now how to calculate this. It's 4%, which is 4 over 100 of 2,000. We can divide top and bottom by 100, and we'll get 4 times 20, which is 80 Rand. So this means that... Each year, the bank's going to give you 80 Rand in interest. So, the interest over three years, because you're going to just leave it all there for three years. Well, if you get 80 Rand each year for three years, how much are you going to have in total in terms of interest? It'll be 80 times 3, which will be 240 and then we can easily tell you what your total amount is going to be that you've got in the bank because you got the 2000 that you put in and then you've got the 240 rand in interest that you earned so in total you'll have 2240 at the end of the three years Here's an example for you to try. If you borrow 3,000 Rand from me for two years and I charge you 5% simple interest, that means I charge you 5% of the 3,000 each year for the two years, how much money will you need to give me back after those two years?
Pause the video now and try it in your homework books. All right. The amount of interest. Each year. That would have been 5% of the 3,000. And that is just 5 over 100 times 3,000. And we can divide top and bottom by 100. And 5 times 30 gives me 150. Two years of interest. Well, that's going to be 2 times 150, which is 300. So how much will you owe me in total? It's going to be the 3,000 plus the 300, which is going to give you, oh, well, let me write it right up at the top, 3,300.